Welcome everybody. Thank you for tuning in to the Lone Wolf's sub $2,000 budget bike roundup and giveaway. Today, we're gonna to be discussing each of the five bikes in this shootout, kind of discussing our impressions of them overall, and then we're gonna vote. If we had $2,000 or less to spend on a mountain bike, which one we would take home, so. First up, we've got the Canyon Neuron AL 6.0 SL. Now that is a 130 millimeter bike front and rear, comes with a RockShox Recon RL fork and a RockShox Deluxe RT rear shock. Has a SRAM NX Eagle 12 speed drivetrain and like most of the other bikes, Shimano MT200 brakes. The geometry on the bike's pretty capable for a 130 bike. It's a 67.5 degree head tube angle 74 and a half degree seat tube angle and our size large has a 455 millimeter reach. This is a 29er and has 440 mil chain stays. So um, Nick, lead it off. I really like this bike. I think it's definitely the XC pinner bike of choice for me. Uh, you know, it has, it's long, it's low, it's stable. It's very much that European design. And I was very happy with the way it rode on, you know, fast, relatively calm single track. It did tend to get overwhelmed in some of the gnarlier stuff for me. So I did like the bike though. Yeah. Sour Patch? I didn't have any complaints really. It's just, there's other bikes in the lineup that I'd rather have, I think. What, what didn't stand out to you out of the Canyon? Tires for one. <laughs> Grip is almost non-existent in dry conditions, I think. Yeah, the Forecaster just isn't a front tire of choice for me. Full, I was folding the tire up quite a bit on that, which Everything. made for a little bit of a squirmy, sketchy ride on the front as well. But standouts, I thought it was great having a full rock shock suspension uh, spec. We liked the dropper post. You know, some of the bikes don't have dropper post. A pretty plush, smooth, supple suspension feel. Like I, I thought that bike was pretty solid all around and impressive. It's obviously the most expensive bike at 1999. Um, but it's so. the most complete package, I think, too. Correct, yeah. All right, so. We'll move on to the next bike, which is the most affordable in the group, and that is the Diamondback Atroz 3. Uh, that bike retails for $1,500, has a RockShox Recon RL fork and a RockShox Monarch R rear shock. It has NX X Horizon SRAM 11-speed drivetrain, uh, Shimano MT200 brakes, and um, the Geo. That's the where it starts to get weird. It's got a 435 millimeter reach on a size large, which um, oddly enough is like just barely bigger than the size medium giant that we uh, got in this test. So 66 and a half degree head tube angle and a 72.5 degree seat tube angle, which is really pretty slack. And uh, as you may notice, will result in the very forward seat position that we have. Bike just felt so small for a large. Yeah. Like I, I could barely ride it terrifying to jump. It did go over rock gardens pretty well, I think. That rear shock just kind of soaks it up pretty plush. Climbing, it felt all right, even I though thought it climbed like so quite well. Steep. Yeah. Like, just being over the front end, it just... G Geo and looks, to me, were, are the big holdups. Big deal breakers there. Yeah. yeah. I think the seat tube angle, seated pedaling efforts were uh, a challenge with the 72 degree seat tube angle. Uh, that just puts you so far out behind the back seat and then the reach is so compact it's hard to get up and into the pedals if you do want to stand yeah standing was tough i just felt it, like it, it was felt a, like the bars were at your knees i mean it felt like riding you know a bike from 10 years ago now. i mean when you stand up and you're going downhill you know the yeah. bike works like i mean the suspension works um you know i mean we were able to outride some guys out on the trail on that thing that were riding you know six seven thousand dollar bikes and uh it works but I think for the for the price that you're paying um, and the competition that's out there, I think the geo and and the looks really are kind of what hold that bike back. So next up is one of our favorite bikes in the shootout. That is the Giant Stance 291. Uh, retails for $1,800 and it is a 120 mil rear travel with a RockShox Deluxe RT shock and a 130 mil RockShox Recon RL fork. It comes with a SRAM SX Eagle 12 speed drivetrain and Shimano MT200 brakes and Max's Forecaster tires. Once again, it also has a giant contact switch dropper post. And um, the Geo on this bike, I thought was 
pretty spot on. I mean, it definitely made it one of the most fun bikes in the shootout. Head tube angle was 67.5 degrees. Uh, seat tube angle was 75 degrees. Who wants to lead that one off, Nick? Yeah, so I, this is just a great all around bike. Like it's, you know, even in a medium and we're all definitely on a large normally, I felt like this was capable at anything Ben had to throw at it. Uh, you know, it was snappy in the corners. It was very good to climb on. The Geo's, you know, very neutral. You feel like you're climbing naturally the whole time. And then point it downhill and it's quick to accelerate. It's quick in corners. It's quick in the straights. You know, just like any of these bikes, of course, with this suspension level, you're going to get overwhelmed in bigger stuff. But I felt like it was a really solid package for what it had. Yeah, that, that suspension tune, I think, on that was probably the best or one of the best out of the group. It definitely stood out compared to some of the Excursion based bikes. Huge. Yeah. Sour Patch? I know that bike was small for Oh, you. it's way too small for me, but I'm like four inches taller than you guys. We, we got a little, I guess, unnerved uh, at high speeds coming into corners, but- It jumps I mean, great. That's only because of the sizing. I'm totally confident that a size large would remedy that situation. Um, suspension spec, pedaling, that bike was I probably had the most fun jumping that bike out of anything. You know, I always think of when I'm talking about and reviewing bikes, I always try to think like, what's the bike that I can just jump on and ride yeah. and feel comfortable? And that is that bike. I don't know about that. All right, next up, uh, another really badass bike. And I would say probably all of our picks for the best budget to performance ratio. 100%. For sure. Yeah, uh, the Marin Hawk Hill 1. Spike swings way above its weight class. Um, it retails for $1,599. A 120 rear, 130 front. Uh, it's got a RockShox Recon RL and an Xfusion O2 Pro R shock. We did not think that the Xfusion shocks performed all that well as a whole. There's a, a lot of stiction and, and they're just kind of harsh off the top. The Marin did not have any of those feelings in, in my impression i guess i, when I, I believe it does have a custom tune on that shock correct it does and marin uh, nailed it with x-fusion because it, it shows that bike definitely uh, outrides the other bikes in terms of suspension suppleness over rocky chattery terrain 66 and a half degree head tube angle 74.3 degree seat tube angle uh, 465 reach which is nice and uh, 430 mil chainstays it is a 27 and a half inch wheeled bike and it does not have a dropper Granted, it's also several hundred dollars less than other bikes in the shootout. I really like the Marin. I like the 27 five inch wheels. It didn't feel as fast on some of the XE trails, which a lot of these 120, 130 bikes excel at. But man, it was a blast to shred corners. This bike in the saddle was probably one of the most comfortable next to the Giant, I'd say. Like the suspension tune allowed it to really, you could sit down and stay pedaling. Um, even having a 10 speed drivetrain, it didn't really hinder its performance at all. I never even noticed. <laughs> well, you're just so strong, XC guy. Um, but yeah, so th uh, that would be, I guess, a cause for concern for a lot of people that, um, you know, maybe spend more time in the charts, right? Yeah. But like you said, did, did the 10 speed bother you? It, it doesn't you? hold you back. Uh, yeah, so the Marin Hawk Hill guy, I mean, they did a good job. Prop, props to Marin, that thing's. And they do have, it's, I think it's worth noting, they do have a bike that's priced just a little bit higher than the yep. Hawk Hill Nin one. 1950. Little, 1950, okay. Yep comes with a dropper post. Um, 12 and, speed. Yeah, exactly, 12 speed, a little different shock spec. All right, so. Good news. Don't worry, no U-turns yet. Budget bikes don't usually come spec to tubeless. Worthy the upgrade if you're looking at. Moving on to maybe the best looking bike in the bunch. For sure. The Polygon Siskiyou T7. It retails for $16.99. It is also the longest travel bike uh, in the group, which is a 140 front and rear, a RockShox Recon RL fork, and an Xfusion O2 Pro RL shock. WTB Trail Boss tires, which were awesome. Does have a dropper post, a 66.5 degree head tube angle, and a 74.1 degree seat tube angle. This bike is available in 29 or 27.5 options, um, with the only difference being uh, travel. What do you think? Sour Patch, go take this one off first. Uh, initially it was pretty rough, but we had a bit too much air pressure in that rear shock. It felt like it struggled climbing, or at least I had issues climbing with it. Like it was just held back a little bit, didn't roll as well. 
Yeah, but I didn't, I didn't find me. it to be the, the, the climbing pinner bike. No, it no. definitely did not go uphill as fast as some of the other bikes. But that could be because of the tires yeah, being 2.6 be and 2.4. Yeah. yeah. The upside to that is it was probably the most, one of the most stable, planted, confident bikes going downhill, like when stuff got steep. I felt when we got on these bikes, it's pretty apparent, uh, I'd say that like they just, they don't feel like the more expensive bikes that we've tested from all of these brands, um, which was really surprising that we actually could tell that, but it doesn't mean we didn't have fun and that they weren't capable, but the Polygon was probably the closest feeling in terms of body position, stance, uh, That was cockpit. the first thing I noticed when I jump on, I'm like, this feels like a modern new bike. Yeah. And it feels very similar to, you know, six or $7,000 bike. I think, I mean, I feel like we had more fun riding these than we did some of the more expensive bikes. Oh yeah, because you're trying to push these things to the absolute limit and we're like, hey, they still can hang. You I just did, have yeah. to, you yeah. just have to make some allowances. No, we, I mean, we still hit everything. We're still, we're yeah, just, we're everything. just scared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it didn't stop us. I, I mean, I think honestly, tire tire spec was is probably the the biggest thing. Um, if a bike didn't have a dropper post, which is that also was big, horrible. You know, I'd had no idea how ingrained the dropper post had gotten in yeah. <laughs> a non-dropper bike, and I was like, this is terrible. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, that those are the bikes. Um, those are kind of our uh, thirty thousand foot impressions of each bike. Now the question is, you've got two thousand oh dollars to spend God. on a bike. Including upgrades. Two thousand dollars, that's what you got. What are you gonna do? Man, it's it's a, it's a toss up for me between the Giant and the Canyon, but because I lean a little more towards pedaling in the XC world, I think I'm gonna stick with the Canyon and throw some new tires on Okay. That's over the two thousand oh, no, dollar budget. Over. I'm staying with the canyon. The canyon for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Sour Patch? Uh, I'd probably go with the Marin and maybe step up to the Hawk Hill 2 or even just, yeah, yeah, I think going to the Hawk Hill 2 would be the best bet. Then I got 50 bucks left for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> if I lived somewhere that demanded, I guess, a little bit more of an aggressive bike, a little longer travel, if I was maybe like, I don't know, 10 years younger, still jumping and shredding stuff and all that. Um, I'd probably pick the Polygon and maybe upgrade the shock. As it sits now though, I would pick the Giant. Um, I feel like that bike is, for me, the most fun. I loved jumping it. The suspension is supple, it pedals well. I like the Geo, I like the looks. Um, so yeah, I, I think I would go with the Giant and uh, put some better tires on there, man, and save up for, you know, maybe little upgrades along the way as, as I wear stuff out. All right, so we would like to thank, uh, obviously, all these brands for donating these bikes for the test. Um, none of the brands contributed it in any way other than giving us these bikes, which we are going to be giving away to five of our subscribers. Did, however, get some great support from Usui and, uh, for hydration packs and Zoic for clothing, uh, which we've been wearing throughout the shootout. And uh, it's pretty awesome because we stayed hydrated and uh, comfortable. So look good doing uh, it. Yeah, <laughs> thanks to Usui and Zoic for that. Now, how can you win these bikes? All you gotta do is hit the subscribe button and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and then go visit thelonewolf.com. Uh, there'll be a pop-up, enter your email address there. Basically one week from when this video comes out, we're gonna be going through all the people who've submitted, subscribed, and uh, picking five lucky winners. So thank you guys again for the support, watching these videos. Um, without you guys following us and subscribing, we wouldn't be able to get these bikes to give away. So thanks to you guys, thanks to the brands, and we appreciate y'all very much, and we'll see you out on the trails. Thanks for watching.